It's great to be here. I really need to acknowledge. And I want to thank you, all of you, of being here, taking the time and listening to these amazing speakers. And I hope to be on the stage as soon as it gets to better and to convey a message. And the message is very clear. You have to make a joyful decisions in your life. And I have an, a message for you. Who am I? Well, I'm 48 years old. I think uh, I am one of the younger uh, people in the cohort. Okay, just in the middle. Uh, I think I'm the oldest. But I am a very committed person. I live in Mexico. I have a stable life. I have a good economical position. And I lived very in an easy way. Even though I work with violence and crime in the prevention side. And it's so powerful. It's challenging. Every single day, you have to face these amazing people that always are hurting each other. But still, they are amazing. What I decided to come here, to be outside of that comfort zone, well, it took me a while to understand why I made this decision. But I understand something. Being here, I received a message from one of my daughters. My sons, my daughters, are teenagers, tough age, for sure. And I am very far away from them. Still, I have the feeling that I am close to them. But nevertheless, I am physically away. It's tough. But I am here, and I have to do something with that. Let me re refresh something and create a framework of what I do. This was published almost one year ago. Could gang violence send Mexico's children? I work with gangs. And this is an amazing problem in Mexico. Just two facts, 100,000 plus deaths, 12 years, and all kinds of violence are escalating in Mexico. This is not new. There have always been violence. But the federal government needed to implement public policies in order to understand two things. What were the triggers? And what were the red zones? What happened there? I live in San Luis Potosí, this little dock. And it's surrounded by 10 states. As you can imagine, it's the natural passing through of the drugs. And it creates a very conflict zone right in the middle of Mexico. It's a challenge situation. The local government approached to me as a research center and asked me to intervene in one of the urban slums called General y Martinez. This is the southern part of, uh, of the city. It's extremely violent and extremely dangerous. And I was extremely afraid. Because in those areas, there had been killings. And the people doesn't respect you. The first time I came to that place, they told me, hey, little whitey, are you afraid? You have to be. I was terrified. I was extremely terrified. But uh, I took a courage because I saw a lot of effort, a community effort. And I stood with them. I conducted a field research, and I saw the local leaders were developing activities with the children, the right approach. And the public spaces were used to create 
sport activities. The right approach. But they were, they were not facing the key issue. They were not working with gangs. And that was the key issue. They are doing the preventing efforts, but they are not working with the key elements. I took this person, Don Armando, and I asked him to take me to the whole uh, urban slum. And I saw this place. It's a dry river. And she showed me this. It's hopeless. It really is. I couldn't take, if I wanted to work with uh, the gangs, I couldn't work with them in the same places that the people, the children, and the other uh, young boys were working. We had to create a new space, a new area, to create a, the right approach. As you can imagine, these scenes are so terrible. Nevertheless, we started working with the public policies, and we created this program called La Banda por la Paz, the Gang for Peace. It was so powerful. It created uh, art and sports and community awareness of what has to be done in order to prevent the violence and the crime. These three guys are awesome. They were asked to create this graffiti and they are showing this as a powerful image of what the religious can do in that context, because it creates hope and the dreams of being a better person. When I realized that, I needed to work with the stakeholders. If I was working with the gangs, I needed to work also with the police and the community, and most of all, with the mothers. So we started working on creating awareness with the local police academy. Some of those people were um, originally from that urban slum. We also created awareness with the police. It was very interesting to see how they are considered the gang members. They are the worst of everything. They are hopeless and they will do whatever it takes to create conflict. It doesn't matter if you war with them. They are going to create conflict. That was the, the perception. And we start working with also with the community, with the neighbors, in order to understand what are the key issues that the, the, the neighbors have to do in order to create the appropriate environment. This is beautiful. I call these amazing women, las generalas, the generals. Why is that? It doesn't matter if you are a gang member, you should listen to your mother. And for sure, they are going to be listened. These are the amazing people that drove the change. When they are committed, no one can interpose between the commitment and the success. Now, we were ready to war with the gangs. And we created this beautiful space in order to understand their own environment. Then, the physically uh, work arrived. They were cleaning up the area. All of a sudden, everything was clear. There were no gang members. It was obvious. Not for me. Ricardo, Juan, Raul. They had individuality. 
so obvious. And I was understanding everything was so clear. We have to create identity, the personal identity, in order to understand what has to be done in order to build a proper society. And this is the same space. Now, they belong to them. And they own it. It's beautiful. We started with, with four teams. Right now, There are 75 teams. And it is great because we are not working with gangs. We're working with people, with teams, and people who are committed with sports. They provided a, a policy, an internal policy. You cannot drink here. You cannot, you cannot smoke here. This is our space. And it's beautiful. Now, the community, every single Saturday and Sunday, go to that space and they enjoy the, the games. The public spaces are recovered. These are great people. When I go back to Mexico, I will tell them that I was talking in TED. As, so, as I am so proud to tell them this, that I, cannot, oh, I can tell you right now that I am so proud to tell you about them. Because these are beautiful people as well. What took me the decision to, to, to be here? This guy is the one to blame for. I saw him like a theater meters. He's being held by his father, his parents. And when I saw him, I was struck. And I asked Don Armando, who was he? He said, He was a gang member, and he received a shot in the head six months before this picture was taken. It was very, very powerful. <clears throat> and I said to the Armando, bring him over. He's going to give the kickoff. And I want to share this with you. I was speechless. And every single person in that community understood what needed to be done. He was 17 years old. And he has the most amazing experience and courage. After the game ended, his father came to me and he said, El pájaro, the bird, wants to talk to you. And I came to him and I said, ¿Qué onda, pajarito? <laughs> What's up? What can I do for you? And he said, give me job. Give me employment. I don't want this to happen ever again. I need to be productive. And I couldn't say anything. Because I was speechless. I made him a promise. I would understand how to create a business, a productive business. And that's why I decided to come here. 
and to create this opportunity of a lifetime for those individuals, for my community. Because I really think that they are committed with the success, but they do not know how to do it. And the mothers, they also wanted to know that their family are okay. But they need to know and to understand and to create opportunities. And that's why I am here. Nevertheless, I am not with my family. I have found another kind of motivation. Not a substitute, but a different kind of motivation. From the day one, you have to believe me, I wanted to quit the program. I wanted to quit. It's so intense. That is my comfort area, my comfort zone. Being with the gangs, being in, kind, in this kind of environment is so powerful that I cannot manage. <laughs> Nevertheless, I'm still here because I understood that quitting or dropping off the program, it's a personal decision. But continue to going on, it's a collective implication. And those people are expecting that someone can go once again and to be successful and to create opportunities to overcome that kind of powerless and hopeless images. I have a wish for you. I really wish you that you will find in your life a person that can challenge you and can be, inspire you so powerful that can take you in a journey just like me. Thank you very much.